Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome back to my channel for another 30 DLX scale Transformers unboxing and review video. Now today we are going to be taking a look at Bumblebee based off his appearance in Transformers The Last Night. Not my favourite Transformers film but I do absolutely love the design for B in that movie. Now I do have to say a huge thank you to 30 for sending me this production sample so I could make this review. If you are looking to grab B, he is available from toyswonderland.com. Link for that is in the description below. They have 12 month instalment plans and a points based reward system. While you're down there, why not hit that subscribe and bell notification icon plus the join button for more info on Justin's Collection plus the channel memberships. What we are going to do now though is get the box laying flat in the light box and do the unboxing. Here of course we have the box art and it's relatively straightforward. An image of B front and center, Transformers on the side, his name down below. On the side of the box, a silhouetted image of Bumblebee plus Transformers Last Night once again. On the back, you do have a product shot of the figure himself. Now, just like the other DLX packages, you can flip open the front window to reveal the figure inside and another piece of artwork. I actually happen to really like that image. But we're not really here to dissect the packaging, we're more here to check out he himself. Now I do have the Transformers Bumblebee version of Bumblebee, so I am curious. How is this guy going to stack up, and which one is ultimately going to be my favourite Bumblebee? First in-hand impressions are, this guy is a little bit smaller than I was expecting. Now obviously this is in scale with the DLX figures, but seeing as though we just reviewed Jetfire and he was absolutely massive, this guy is more of a return to form for the regular DLX size releases. What we are going to do now though is get all of his accessories laid out in the light box and take a closer look at everything he comes with. Here we have all the parts and pieces. Now starting off with the display base first, it is the usual DLX style base. It's rather slim, there's a ton of tech detail sculpted into the surface. Plus you have 30 Transformers The Last Night Bumblebee right up front. I also like this pop of yellow, it breaks up an overall very dark display base. Up top you have a fully articulated flight pole arm that can lock in position because B himself is rather heavy. You simply flick the switch and then it's not going anywhere. You can also extend this top piece and collapse it back down, plus the peg that actually connects to B himself can move forward and back. As for weaponry, let's start off with the hammer first, because let's be honest, this is arguably the more interesting and unique of the two. Now if you're wondering what this is, this is a clip that attaches to his back so you can holster the hammer. But just to show how crazy 3-0 are with their attention to detail, this even has some dry brushing of silver on the surface. For a clip that you may never otherwise see with the hammer pegged into it. Speaking of the hammer, this looks awesome. These spike pieces are a little bit sharp, so do be careful not to prick yourself. Now it is painted in silver and yellow, but there is a ton of dirt and grime on the surface. There are washers, there's some silver dry brushing, this thing looks filthy, dirty and grimy. Which is perfect, because it fits the aesthetic of Bumblebee himself. Just to give you a little taste of that, here we have his forearm cannon and his battle mask. Now the battle mask is absolutely something I'm going to be using in the display. I just love the way it looks. Now you do have a base coat of yellow with some washers in the crevices, plus some translucent smoked lenses. So technically you should be able to see his eyes through this. And yes, don't worry, we will be trying this on B a little bit later on. As for the forearm cannon, I love the way this looks. Up top you do have some yellow for the yellow sections, some black stripes up the front, as well as some silver chipping and dirt and grime all over the entire panel. You also have a brake disc with a brake caliper, 
And then underneath that, this absolutely massive cannon. There is a ton of tech detail here, you've got multiple different colours at play with silver and copper, plus on top of all of that you have a bunch of silver dry brushing. Now I haven't quite decided yet which of the two weapons my bumblebee is going to be using, but you can bet, just like the battle mask, we'll be trying all of them on him a little bit later on. Lastly, you do have a full array of hands. Now one day I'm hoping 3-0 give the DLX line fully articulated fingers. But unfortunately, today is not that day. At the very least, you do get a ton of different gestures. Now they are very nicely sculpted with, once again, you guessed it, some silver dry brushing on the surface. Plus a bunch of oil stain washes and some chipping on the yellow sections. They are also made out of this slightly rubbery plastic, so there is a little bit of flex to them which is definitely a good thing when you're trying to insert the hammer into his gripping hands. What we are going to do now though is get B himself out here and take a closer look. Here we have him standing straight up and down in the light box, no crazy poses or accessories or anything like that. And yeah, that is 100% Bumblebee from Transformers The Last Knight. Whether you love the design or hate it, you can't deny that 3-0 have captured it in figure format almost perfectly. This looks bang on to the CGI model. Now, no, he can't transform. Am I upset about that? No, I'm absolutely not. The amount of articulation you have here, the crazy engineering, and the fact that, as I just said, he's bang on to the CGI model, this checks a lot of my boxes. Now the best part about this design is it looks cool, it has all of the best parts of the Last Night design language, while skipping out on some of the worst, like the overly smooth and humanoid aesthetic, this still has a bunch of car parts, which makes a Transformer like Bumblebee actually look like a Transformer rather than just a humanoid robot. What we are going to do now though is take him off the turntable, punch in, and take a closer look at the details. Here we have him up close and personal. Now, just like all the other DLX figures, there is a lot to look at here. There are various car components and robot bits and tech pieces that have all come together to make up B. Now, starting off with his head sculpt, yeah, that's absolutely Bumblebee. But I personally have one complaint. It's the eyes. They are just far too small. Now, the gold sections around the edges should have been dialed back, at least in my opinion. Because I've always known B to have these big emotive eyes, and for me that just doesn't cut the mustard. Now he does have his battle mask, which unlike previous figures, doesn't require anything to be removed, it simply slides on top. And yeah, it's a very seamless transition. You also have fully articulated ears up on top, and all of the yellow from head to toe is very nicely weathered. There's dirt and grime on the surface, there are chips, there are scuffs, and exposed bare metal, which of course would just be some silver dry brushing. Now around the back he does have the car doors with some tinted windows, plus the spoiler that's been split in two to make up these bottom wings. Now they are fully articulated, but they're super thin plastic, so do be careful when you're trying to move them. Up top you do have some real rubber wheels that can rotate, and there's even some dirt in the tyre treads. Now the clip for the hammer is pre-installed in the back there, so if you wanted to you could wedge the hammer in, but then it kind of sticks up really high over his noggin. So for me, yeah, I'm going to go without. Now back around the front you can make out the front section of the Camaro, plus these little pieces up top are on ball joints so you can move them around if you wanted to. Now the arms are also, once again, chock full of detail. There's a base layer of gunmetal plus some silver dry brushing up on top, and multiple fully articulated pieces. Now if you are wondering what he looks like with the gun attached, you very simply remove one arm and a metal pin is then exposed. You bring in the gun and yes, it simply slides in place and now Bumblebee is fully equipped with his blaster. 
and it looks really good and just like the battle mask, fully seamless. Now the cool thing about B is he does have some very superhero-esque proportions. Very wide shoulders and it comes down to a nice slim V taper at the waist. You can also make out multiple pistons that I guess would be part of the engine. Now coming down to his legs, I don't know if Michael Bay and the designers behind this particular look for B actually ever built a physical model, because having these pieces on his thighs are kind of a little bit annoying, because if you think about it, when he bends his leg, this piece would get in the way constantly. And luckily, 3-0 have thought of that. More on that when we get to articulation. Now coming down to the legs, these are very big and chonky. And there is a lot of die cast here, so he is going to be planted in the display. Plus, you have multiple different washers and dirt and grime on the silver and gunmetal pieces. And then, of course, that same nice vibrant yellow that we had up on top. Now, I know the question is probably going to be, Justin, is this now your favourite DLX scale bumblebee? Don't worry, we'll get to that a little bit later on. Now for a quick side-by-side -side comparison, here we have Optimus Prime from Revenge of the Fallen. Now I know, this is not the correct Optimus, but technically if you did want to mix and match, they are all from the Bayverse. And as you can see, Optimus is significantly taller than Bumblebee. Now I am hoping that we get a bunch more characters from the last night and Bumblebee is just the beginning, but of course, as with all things, only time will tell. Next up, here we have Last Night B on the left and the Solo Movie B on the right. And as you can see, Solo B is the shorter of the two. But that works perfectly fine for me. If you think about it, a Transformer, a robot that transforms out of a Camaro, a full-size sedan, yeah, he's probably going to be a little bit taller than a robot that transforms out of a beetle. Now, is this potentially a little bit continuity breaking? Because technically they're supposed to be the same character? I don't know. That's going to be down to personal preference, it's up to you. Because at the end of the solo movie, we very clearly see B scan a Camaro and then he's on his way. To, of course, Transformers 1. Now, for me personally, I prefer the look of the solo movie version, but that being said, the last night one with all of that added detail is no slouch either. Just going over articulation. Now, bear in mind this is my personal copy of the figure, so I'm going to be a little bit more careful. I'm sure when you get yours in hand, you can push the joints slightly further than I am willing to go. Also, this is a very complex beast when it comes to engineering. So if I miss something, I do apologize. Now, starting off with the head sculpt, it is on a ball joint at the base of the head and another at the base of the neck. Looking forward and back, swivel and pivot side to side. The arms will go up to there as multiple panels collide and move out of the way, going forward and back. Butterfly joint at the shoulder that also hinges up and down. Swivel at the bicep, double bend at the elbow that does get you past 90, and then a ball joint for the wrist peg. The torso does crunch forward and back, swivel and then a super sturdy pivot side to side. The legs do drop down, going forward to there, going out to there, swivel at the upper thigh, double bend at the knee that does get you past 90, but they will collide with his wings around the back. Down here for the feet, you do have a bunch of different joints. A hinge that goes forward and back, pivots side to side, multiple different joints down here for toe articulation. Just wrapping up on 3-0's DLX scale Bumblebee from Transformers The Last Night. Now going into this, I was really excited. Now you may be sitting there screaming at your monitor saying, Justin, you literally told us you don't like this movie. How were you excited? Why were you excited? Well, I see you, and I raise you the fact that sometimes a character design is so cool that it transcends the rather lackluster film that it was based off. And that's exactly what we have right here. So no, I don't apologize for being excited. In fact, it was warranted. This figure is great. The articulation, the crazy engineering, the swap out pieces with the battle mask, which you all know I love, and the forearm cannon, 
yeah. He checks a lot of my boxes. Plus the icing on the cake, the paint applications. This guy looks beautiful. There's a ton of scratches and chipping and wear and tear, just like we see in the films. Now, in my opinion, this is the second best smaller scale Bumblebee that doesn't transform. I think that the Bumblebee movie version is the superior of the two, just because I like the film that little bit more. But if you do prefer the Camaro aesthetic, then this one might just speak to you. Now, I do have to say a massive thank you to 3-0 for sending me this production sample so I could make this review. If you are looking to grab him, he is available from ToysWonderland.com. Link for that is in the description below. They have 12-month installment plans and a points-based reward system. While you're down there, why not hit that subscribe and bell notification icon plus the join button for more info on Justin's Collection Plus, the channel membership. If you like the sound of seeing your name in the end credits of my reviews, like, comment, and subscribe, and we'll catch you in the next video.